You're on board KCAA's Inland Talk Express. KCAA, Loma Linda, 1050 AM, the station that leaves no listener behind. Hello and welcome to Let's Go Shopping with Bev. This show brought to you by Starflight Entertainment. Music by Dr. Bombay and the Blue Machine Band. Song title, Living in Paradise. Now here's Bev. Welcome to the show, everybody, and I hope you're having a happy Friday out there. And uh, you know the best thing about this Friday? What's the best thing about this Friday? No rain, no snow, no ice, no nothing. And this morning, boys and girls, when I was having my first cup of coffee, I looked out my back door, and on my property, I seen the rabbits. So that means spring is a coming. We now can put all the winter stuff away, come out with all the new spring line and summer line, and get happy. What were the rabbits doing? They were eating. Eating. Yeah, they were eating the grass. I was hoping for a better comeback than that. No, they were eating the grass. And I just... Uh, You're a dirty old man. <laughs> yes. Oh, and, no, 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 no. Clean comeback. Clean, clean. And, hey, Joey. Hello. Hey, Joey. Italian Joey is my board op again today. And I'm so happy we have two Italians in the same building at the same time. Hey, Joey, I'm going to make a deal you can't refuse. I don't smell any pot. The floor of the station platforms that uh, the timing works out with all the signals and the uh, variable message signs that tell when the next bus is arriving. Well, talking about E Street and uh, hospitality, I'm in that area quite a bit, and so because of where our station is and what have you, and I go past it, and you could see the lights flashing. Now, could you explain to all of the listeners... The lanes by then, um, I'm going to an event at Loma Linda Academy that uh, is going to attract quite a number of people and will give me an opportunity to promote the new service there. We have a station right there. But um, there's going to be no detour of our service because our service hasn't started yet. But as far as Route 2, um, I have not heard whether there are any changes uh, on that mm-hmm. service. I think that the traffic impact is only going to be on the off-ramp and I don't believe the off-ramp will be closed. I think it will be accessible. They're going to make sure that vehicles have access to Anderson Street and to New Avenue. Okay, because when I heard it and got the info, they were talking that it was going to be shut down completely. So that's what I wanted to know. You know what I mean? And yeah, I mean, it's, it's not related to our project, but I think that what I had read was that um, two two lanes were going to be closed, but that there would still be access. Okay, very good. And David, we have Cliff from um, uh, Cliff's Best Control with us in the uh, house today, and also Richard is in the house with us today. And both of these gentlemen have some questions for you, so I am going to turn it over to Richard. David, this is Rich. Going up and going up and down E Street, I notice that where I see these new bus stops, they're a lot further apart than what bus stops used to be. Um, how does that work out? I mean, it seems like the other buses stopped at about four times the number of street corners. Right. Um, well, just to give an example, Route 2 is the one that's on the SBX corridor, and it stops on average every one-third of a mile. The uh, SPX station platforms are, on average, a mile apart from one another. They're not exactly mile intervals, but there are 16 station locations, and the corridor is uh, almost 16 miles long. It's 15.7 miles. So that's, on average, uh, a stop per mile. Uh, Some of them are further apart than one another, such as the ones between Hunts and Hospitality and uh, the next one north at North Mall Way and E Street. And then some of them are much closer to one another. For example, the platform at East Street and Rialto uh, being only about a third of a mile away from the platform at East Street and Court Street downtown. Well, what I'm wondering about, when they're a mile apart, do I have to get off at that platform and walk a half a mile if I'm going in between? So Route 2 will remain on the corridor for that very reason because it continues to service those midpoints. So ah. people who use the corridor regularly can figure out what they need to do to coordinate their trip. But for the most part, the SBX service is designed to uh, help reduce commute distances or commute times 
for people with long distance commutes, uh, typically 10 miles or more. And if you look at the bigger picture, our plan is to have nine more of these corridors throughout the Omnitrans service area over the next two, three decades. And that will help significantly reduce long distance uh, bus commutes so, throughout the, the Omnitrans service area. So let's say I, you know, take a little bit of a long distance ride there and I get off at one of these stations for the XBS bus, then are the local buses going to be stopping right nearby too if I want to transfer to one of them to go that way? Yes, I believe at every station location where there's an SBX stop, there will be uh, a Route 2 stop. Very good. Where you can connect and get to some of the midpoints like Orange Show Lane. Uh, Middle Street and some of the other locations where the SBX. Okay. The other not, thing I, I noticed that you have these green traffic signals that seem to be just for the buses with like uh -huh. a, uh, a green, not an arrow, but a bar going left or right or up and down or something. What does that signify? Is that for the buses only? or? Well, it's something the bar signals are, are, are actually white. Um, okay. But they are, they, they've been added to the uh, signals that indicate a left turn for the general traffic. But the bar signals are a part of the traffic signal prioritization. Okay. Which basically signal for the vehicle to stop if it's a flashing horizontal bar and for it to go once it's vertical. So, so basically, um, it's timed in coordination with the, the regular traffic flow of E Street and Hospitality Lane. Okay. I have one more for you, and then I'll let Cliff uh, talk. If I'm trying to turn in front of the, one of those buses or the bus routes, I'm, I notice some of the lanes the, for the cars, especially down on Hospitality, you have to turn right in front of the buses to turn left, right across them. How does that all work? Well, that's where the green arrow comes in. Okay. So if you're in a left turn lane next to the center running lanes, uh, you should not be paying attention to the white bar. You should be paying attention to the bar in your lane, which is the, the green arrow and um, so that, the red that, light. That'll get you across that left then. Correct. Okay. Because that will require uh, either for there not being a vehicle in the area, you know, allowing for a left turn to be made safely, or uh, it would require uh, either the vehicle to stop for, so the bus can go through or the bus to stop so the vehicle can go okay, through. Okay, very so, good. Thank you. Cliff, you have some days. questions. Yeah, I have a question. Um, I noticed northbound on East Street to pull into the, six, the San Manuel sta uh, Stadium, 66ers. It's blocked off, so you can't make a left going in. Have you had any uh, pushback from that? Because when they have games, you know, I know a lot of times they enter from G Street. However, there's really not a lot of places to make U-turns going uh, north on E Street. Right. Well, you know, um, we've worked this out with the the stadium. The stadium is aware of uh, the work that occurred in front of uh, its facility. And uh, the main entrance is actually um, for northbound traffic on E Street is going to be in the back of the stadium. So people that get to Rialto Avenue... We'll have to make a left turn there and then another left turn, I believe, at F Street or G Street. I can't remember which one that is, but it's G. towards the back a lot. Yeah, I'm, I'm aware of that. I was just there's no Because there's no, uh, there's no U turn allowed at Rialto, no. uh, mainly because of the station platform being there. Um, and so you would actually have to go up to 2nd Street to make a U turn. Yeah, so uh, it might be easier for folks that are going to the stadium that are going northbound on E Street to make a left at Rialto. The other thing you can do is if it's easier to come southbound on E Street, you can you can get in that way because you can legally make a right turn. So so basically, with the new transit corridor, uh, what's happened is um, left turns are prohibited in and out of driveways between intersections, and they're also prohibited at T intersections like that one, unless there's already a signal there. Yeah, In that case, there's not. I only bring that up because the G Street off-ramp, I mean, that, that gate is closed during non-game times, and the only way to enter is through the E Street one, and it's it's not a big deal. I just 
it would be nice if it was marked a little better. And are there many more um, issues like that that you've um, worked out deals with to where, you know, maybe we can inform the people about them? Yeah, we're, we've launched a safety campaign um, that began in early February, and we've been going up and down the corridor making sure that businesses are aware of the physical changes to the corridor. And we've been doing that uh, ever since the design phase of the project. So they they knew it was coming. Um, One of the things that uh, they've been able to help us do is post our infographic flyer and make posters or flyers available um, at uh, at their cashier counters so that their customers, as well as their employees, are aware of the changes to the corridor. And so um, we appreciate the work that uh, they're doing to help us inform their clients, their customers, their their employees about the changes on the corridor that um, are really a, a minor inconvenience compared to some of the benefits that we see that this project will have to the overall corridor. Um, you know, bus rapid transit uh, often attracts new development, new business, and all that. But it also uh, has resulted in some uh, major improvements on the corridor, uh, new sidewalks, new signals, new storm drains in some areas. So, I mean, there are there are huge benefits to having a new service like this. And it, it basically brings change to uh, for a better San Bernardino mm-hmm. and Loma Linda. I know that I I appreciate that, and it, I learned the first time I tried to make a left going up <laughs> use an alternate route to go into there. But uh, you know, I just was wondering if it was other issues. So I appreciate that. Thank you. And also, uh, David, talking about this, and all I've been talking to you. Um, pretty much lately here and finding this and finding that. Now, with all the safety uh, routes that you have been telling everybody about, the do's and the don'ts and all of that, do you feel like everybody is really prepared for when them buses come out full force and also after the ribbon cutting and they're really out there? Do you pretty much know what's going on, right? Well, you know, People who are not from this area, uh, they don't notice any difference in the change if they haven't been to San Bernardino in a long time. So they're they're coming into a corridor that has changes that they don't necessarily recognize from the old configuration. Mm -hmm. So we believe that those folks are going to be more um, uh, susceptible to obeying the traffic laws than folks who, for example, are from the area and are not used to the changes from the way they used to drive the corridor. And so that's the education part of it. We've been attacking it at all avenues through social media, through uh, broadcast and print media. Uh, we've launched a Get On Board campaign. We've, we've done everything we can, door-to-door outreach with the businesses. We've done a lot of school outreach. But, you know, you can do all the outreach you can, and you can put as much money into outreach as you can. But the bottom line is, you know, people are going to do what they do. And the fact of the matter is there are sol- solid double yellow lines in that zone for the uh, for the buses. And we want to make sure that they recognize those, that they pay attention, because the buses will be on the corridor every day during testing. And we hope that that will help those who are in on the corridor frequently recognize that uh, it's off limits to vehicle traffic, those two lanes in the middle of the street. Yeah. And so they need to respect the protected left and U-turns further down the street and make those U-turns to get to the other side rather than to try to cut across. Well, so far, so good. And I'm totally impressed, everything that I've been seeing and hearing from you. And uh, Richard has one more question.